welcome to Salter Music. Salter is an exciting new ministry of the Adventist Media Network here in the South Pacific where we discover, nurture original Adventist artists and singer-songwriters. Today we're with a singer-songwriter who's received international acclaim and is an amazing singer, Anna Weatherup. Anna, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Tell us a bit about yourself. Where did you grow up? I uh, grew up in Townsville, North Queensland. I uh, spent most of my life there up until a few years ago. I uh, moved to Brisbane and now living in Sydney. But yeah, I'm from Townsville. So you moved to Brisbane after growing up in Townsville. Why did yeah. you move to Brisbane? Uh, 2005, I was at a stage where I wanted to um, start playing more gigs professionally. And I thought, you know, needed to move to a bigger city. So I moved to Brisbane, late 2005. And then yeah. from Brisbane, you've moved to Sydney? I moved to Sydney, okay. yeah. 2010. Okay. And what do you do in Sydney? What's, what do you do normally? Um, Apart from singing, obviously. I, I actually work in a coffee shop. Uh, I work a day job now. Um, I was singing full time in, um, as a professional uh, in pubs, restaurants. Um, I do weddings still. I still do weddings. But um, yeah, I was doing about three, three gigs a week. Um, so doing it professionally and I just wanted to um, take a step back from that and get back to singing for, for the love of singing, mm -hmm. um, not necessarily for bread and butter every week. So I'm back to working in a coffee shop and loving it, meeting a lot of new people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you were saying you even sell your albums there at the coffee <laughs> I shop? I do, yeah. I have my album sitting on the, uh, the counter down where I serve coffee. Um, and. There's something really special about the, the artwork and the, the photo, the photography on the, um, on the album. Because it's an album of hymns, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. And it's got a beautiful photo on the front taken by Rosanna Kirsch, who's a good friend of mine up in Townsville. And it just, for some reason, you know, attracts people. They pick it up and some people get up, look at it and then put it straight down. And other people, you know, ask questions. And I think probably the majority of the people that come through don't realise it's my CD. Okay. Because um, my face is not actually on the front. It's more of a, a side profile or, yeah, from behind. But, um, yeah, like occasionally someone will buy a copy there at the coffee shop. So secular people are coming in and looking at the album, picking it up and, yeah, for and, sure. and buying it as well. Yeah. How many would you have sold in there? Oh, probably about ten, yeah, since I started a That's few months exciting. ago. Yeah, it's, it's amazing actually. It's, um, it's, it's really nice. I think once people find out it's my CD as well, they're even more inclined to go, oh, yeah, I'll support, definitely. Yeah, okay. And, um, you know, I make it known, you know, it's old school hymns, it's Amazing Grace, and, I, you know, I, I tell them some of the songs that they might, may know, um, you know, like Amazing Grace or um, Be Thou My Vision or Nearer My God to Thee. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's really nice. People, uh, people are really open to supporting, which is re really nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. And are you doing any gigs in Sydney? I do um, a gig down at Luna Park. Luna Park? Yeah, every, every couple of months. Yeah. I go down there for a Sunday afternoon. Uh, with a friend of mine and um, play to the uh, exhausted families, <laughs> exhausted parents that come in from Luna Park. There's a little, like a little restaurant bar area there um, in the park itself on the water. It's beautiful. Yeah, and I do, um, I, I perform or sing, sorry, at, at church on a Sabbath, yeah. Are you getting many requests to play in church? I, when I first moved down, it felt like I was doing something every week. Yep. Uh, and now it's, it's quietened down a bit, but yeah, of course. Any time I'm asked to do it, if I can do it, I'll be there. That's good. Mm. Well, we'll hear from uh, Anna's album, the album of hymns called Nearer. We'll hear the first track today, which is called Blessed Assurance. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. Pray 
chasing my savior all the day long praising my savior all the day long Welcome back to Salter Music. We're talking with singer-songwriter Anna Weatherup. Anna, uh, talk, talk to us about your music. What are your musical influences? Um, I grew up listening to um, secular music. Yeah. Uh, Michael Jackson. Loved Michael Jackson. Um, now, however, I, I probably listen more to artists like Brooke Fraser. Mm -hmm. um, um, I don't really listen to a lot of music. It's just when I'm in the car. Okay. Vintage season, love those guys. Okay. <laughs> I love to support locals. Um, Eric and Monique are fantastic as well. Um, yeah, but when I do listen to music, it's Christian, contemporary Christian, yeah, yep. Brooke Fraser. Yep. Uh, and there is still some secular music that I listen to. Yeah. How old were you when you started singing? Oh, I think I was about 13, 14. Yep. Yeah, I was a bit of a wild child um, yep. and I think probably just to keep me out of trouble mum and the, the, the singing group that she was with in the church yep. encouraged me to get up a few times and and, and do some songs and uh, they started uh, putting the, the you know the solo parts more on me and it just progressed from there really naturally mm -hmm. I mean I always knew I wanted to be a singer um, just didn't really have a plan so it just happened organically, really. Mm. Yeah. And did you sing a lot in church growing up? I did, yeah, every okay. week actually okay. for years. And how'd you find that? Loved it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, some mornings I didn't really feel like getting out of bed, <laughs> but I mean, when the pressure's on to be there, yeah. it makes it a little bit harder. Yeah. But I, I really did enjoy it, and so did the the congregation. Mm. Yeah, it was amazing. And so that that transition into doing you know pub gigs, or secular gigs, how did that come about? Uh, my uncle um, came to Townsville. Yep. He uh, moved to Townsville from Sydney, and he heard me sing with the with the Christian group at a carols event. We were invited to sing at the the big carol event in Townsville, and um, afterwards he asked me, you know, what I was doing with my music, you know, whether I was recording or writing or you know pursuing mm -hmm. it. Um, as a career, as a profession, and I wasn't mm. at the time. So he took me along to an open mic night at a friend's venue, and it just, that's how it started. I met the guitarist who I um, later became a duo partner with, and we gigged for about three years, um, yeah, at that particular pub, and that's how it all got started. So how old were you then? I was 19, yeah, I think. Okay. Yeah, about And 19. when did you start playing guitar? Because you play guitar and sing as well now. Yeah, a friend from church who I sang in the groups with um, taught me my first chords when I was about, uh, probably about 14. Mm -hmm. And so I started writing when I was about 14, playing around with the guitar. I didn't take it seriously though until I moved to Brisbane in 2005 and I had to play solo gigs. Yeah. And my first solo gig I ever played, I... Um, I got the phone call probably about f three weeks before the gig and I said to the lady, the agent, I said, I don't, I can't, you don't understand, I can't play 
guitar, I can't play the recordings that you're listening to. And she said, oh, you'll be fine. So I had, you know, three weeks to really nail, buckle down and learn how to play bar chords and really um, get it together. Yep. And I crawled through the first couple of months of solo gigs, but that's how it started. I got thrown into the deep end, basically. Yeah, OK. Yeah, and grateful for it. <laughs> now, how many original albums have you done? I've done two. Yeah, te technically three. I did a my first album. I, I did was um, recorded in a lounge room. Yep. So it was a real um, budget album, yep. but you know I guess that's still classed as an album. So three, three, and then I done Nearer uh, late last year, 2010. And what was the decision? How how did you come to make the decision to do an album of hymns? I. I came back to the church, so, so I left the church, um, you know, in my earlier 20s um, for a few years and came back in 2008, got baptised and decided that all the old songs that we seem to not be singing as much in church, and that's okay, I know that, you know, things change and we, um, we have new styles in the church and that's great, but I really love the old hymns and so, you know, since coming back I, I wanted to to record them. We're glad you did. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, here's another song from the album Nearer, and it's uh, Softly and Tenderly. Softly, tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling for you and for me See on the portal He's waiting and watching Watching for you and for me Cause
And welcome back to Soul to Music, where we're talking with singer-songwriter Anna Weatherup. Anna, the song Miracle, um, an amazing song, touches a lot of hearts. Thank you. Um, I guess it sort of spiritually is the, was a bit of a turning point in your life. It came at a turning point. You grew up in the church. I guess give us your, your story. What, yeah. Spiritually, what was okay. your story? Um, yep, grew up in the church, went away from the church, did my own thing. Um, and came back in 2008, got baptised. Um, and when I came back into the church um, and started to read the Bible again and understand the world and um, where it's headed, mm -hmm. uh, the prophecies, what's to come, I guess I felt um, a bit scared, a bit overwhelmed, most definitely overwhelmed by it all. It just seemed so, I mean, without God, it seemed hopeless. And um, it was really heavy on my heart. Uh, and I think I write best when I don't have an agenda when I write a song. I just, it's like a diary entry. I'm pouring my heart and soul into something. And that's what I did with Miracle. It was, it was more a, yeah, a purging of how I felt. It was between me and God. You know, I felt like I was this rickety little boat on this huge ocean and there was a storm heading straight for me. And I just didn't know how or, um, when I was, you know, going to get through that storm, um, and God is the miracle that will guide me through it and guide me home. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I need to remember that daily because the the pressure of life and the fear of um, the fears that can enter into life were really heavy on my heart at that time. And um, it's it's a yeah, it's a reminder not to look to yourself or anything else but God to get you through it. Yeah. Um, what were the events that led to you coming back to church and reading the Bible and being baptised, accepting Christ? I, um, I've always um, talked to God even when I went away from the church. I never stopped believing in God. Mm. I guess I just was, was taking on different versions of what God, you know, who God was, what the truth was. Um, I went into a lot of the, the self-help movement and tried to find God in all of that. Um, you know, because I, I struggled a lot actually growing up with depression and bad relationships and drugs and, you know, whatever, all that, all that stuff, all the cliche stuff, I've done it. Yep. Um, so I think I was really searching and it all just dawned on me um, after doing these self-help courses that it doesn't matter how much you know, knowledge you might have or how you try and uh, fluff your feathers up and make yourself feel like a God. God is the way. And it was coming back to him and, and humbling myself more and being open to the fact that, um, that he is, you know, he's the answer and to keep it simple as well, I think, not to look to myself so much. Mm. Yeah. And so from singing, in, you still sing in pubs, though? I mean, I do, yeah, not as much, but There's footage of you I, I on do. YouTube singing Amazing Grace in a pub. That's, that's, it's really quite a, an amazing clip. Um, Thank you. Everyone talking all over the top of you, but <laughs> by the end of it, there's barely a sound in the place. Thank how, you. How do you, how do you, I mean, a lot of people would really struggle going out into pubs and singing, and how do you yeah, find that? Um, I, uh, I love it more when people request Amazing Grace and in that occasion on that video someone did like yeah. they adamant every time they see me play and I do have friends like that and they're not Christian friends. They really want to hear Amazing Grace mm -hmm. and um, you know they shush the whole pub up. Shush, quiet, <laughs> you can hear them in the video hushing the, uh, the noisy pub but um, it's, it's, it's an amazing, wonderful um, feeling I get in my heart when I'm able to sing songs about God in a pub. And not to preach to them, but just to share, you know, love and hope. Mm -hmm. and, and they get it. They really do get it, I think. Would you sing that today for us? Absolutely, okay. I'd love to. Well, first, we'd love to hear the song Miracle, the, the song that has been uh, opened a lot of doors for you. Actually, you came third in the international song competition. Yeah, it did, thank you, yeah. And a congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> uh, here is that song, Miracle, and a weather up.
Navigation systems are down I'm lost out at sea Out at sea I can see the storm Heading straight Well, I hope you've enjoyed the amazing music today. For more information on any of the artists that you've heard on this show, please go to saltermusic.com. <laughs>